everyone, my name is Joanna and I'm one of the physical health and wellness coaches here at Wounded Warrior Project. Today, we are going to be going over the most common movement that we do every day, which is the squat. We will be going over squat modifications as well as how to progress utilizing the squat movement. Let's get started. Before we begin, we must establish a good solid stance before we even begin the squat movement. To get into a good stance, Simply have your feet wider than hip width apart, or they could be right underneath your hips, or they could be a little bit wider. Again, it really depends on the length of your legs and what's comfortable for you. After we've established how far apart our feet are, we're going to figure out if our toes are gonna to be pointed straight ahead or slightly out. Everyone's got different anatomy, so do what's comfortable for you. My toes are gonna to be slightly out. From there, we're going to start talking about the movement. Now, where to place your hands and how we get into the squat will be totally up to you. You can keep your hands on your hips, out in front of you, or simply crossing it over your chest. To begin the movement, we're going to move using our hips first, and then the knee joint and the ankle joint will follow. So whenever we initiate the actual squat movement or the sitting down motion, we do so from our hips. So we're in that nice good stance. Toes are slightly out or pointed straight ahead. And we're going to use our hips to go backward, right? We're going to move our hips to the rear to sit in our seat. Making sure that our hips go back and as we come down, our knees are going to start to bend. Feet are going to stay flat on the ground. Making sure that when you do this movement, hips go first knees stay pointed out and heels remain in contact with the ground. Let's try a few. So I have a good nice stance. My hips are going to go back. My hands can stay on my hips or out in front of me. We're going to go as low as we feel comfortable and then we're going to stand back up again. Let's do this three more times. Awesome. Now, one thing I want to note is when we squat, we want to make sure that our knees are staying behind our toes. All right. We're not jutting our knees forward, which is very common. We want to make sure that our heels stay on the ground. A good way to tell if your heels are on the ground is if you can wiggle your toes at the bottom part of the squat. So make sure your knees are behind your toes. Make sure your heels all of the weight is on your heels and not on the forward part of your foot. Another common mistake that happens with the squat is as people go down into their, their seat position, they typically want to cave their knees or their knees are very weak and they come in. When we squat, we want to push our knees out. Now everyone is different mobility wise. So you may be able to only squat halfway down or a quarter of the way down, which is totally fine. The goal of the squat is to get down so that my thigh is parallel to the floor. Now, as you can see here, again, my knee, if I were to draw a straight line, my knee is right behind my toe. That is solid, solid form. Make sure that when you're in that position, your chest doesn't come forward. So we have really common habits of when we squat, our, our chest comes forward. Typically that's a lack of core strength. So we want to stay nice and tall. Again, make sure that your heels are on the ground. Make sure your hips are initiating the movement, not the knees. And make sure that your knees are staying out and they're not coming in. That goes through each part of the squat, each part of the movement. Again, standing, we go this one more time really quickly. Head is in a neutral position. My head is looking forward and down. My chest and my core, my posture is nice and tall. My hips are initiating the movement. My hips are going to the rear. My knees are staying out and they're staying behind my toes. And lastly, my heels are flat on the ground. Awesome. Now, if you've gone through these movements and you feel like you're stuck 
on one or a couple of the, the movements that we just uh, went through or some of the joints, there are definitely some modifications that can come into play. If you're worried about getting into that depth, that parallel thigh, parallel to the ground, you can certainly use a chair. So a chair is a great resource to use. Simply just putting a chair behind you and just practicing sitting down because in good squat form and the down position, my thigh is parallel to the ground. So practicing with a chair is a great tool, a great way to practice depth. You can also use the back of the chair to help get you a little bit lower. So we have assistance here. Especially if you have balance or stability issues, it's important to hold on to something and progressively get further into that squat depth. Knees, if you're having a hard time keeping your knees pointed out. A really great way is to uh, get a resistance band, a band that you can put underneath, or consciously remind yourself that when you're in the down position, if your knees start to come in, push them out. Screw your, your heels into the ground so that your knees are pointing to the outside, not the in. If you're having trouble keeping your heels on the ground, so every time you squat, you feel like they pop up, take a textbook or a simple piece of wood, place it underneath your heels. So this way it gives a little bit of a, a cushion for your heels. Like it's a risen up from the ground so that you're able to squat easier. And then simply squat with your heels raised. That takes some of the stress off of the ankles. Posture, if posture is something that's difficult and it's really hard for you to keep your chest and your torso up, take another object. It doesn't have to be a weight. It can be literally anything, your cell phone even. And as you're squatting, if you feel like you're coming down, like your chest is falling to the floor, take this object and actually push it away from you. Already my posture is really nice and tall. So sit down, push that object away from you, come back up again. And then lastly, we did talk about balance already, but if you do have balance issues, grab a wall, grab a chair, help initiate the more stability portion of the squat. Keep yourself stable, only go as low as you can. You can definitely go lower than parallel, so if you have really good hip mobility, you can get further to the ground. But the focus here is to keep the thigh parallel to the ground as the ultimate goal. A couple of quick progressions to use. So chair squats are great for starting out if you're working on depth. You can definitely add weight to any of this at any time. But the rule of thumb is make sure that you can do the movement successfully without weight before adding on weight. So we don't want to progress too fast, too quickly. We did a body weight squat. We can do sumo squats. So sumo squats are wider than hip width. And they're just a more of a wider dynamic of a squat. We can obviously add weights at any time. You can hold a weight to your chest. You could put a backpack on. You could also hold weights on either side to create more of a challenge for your lower body uh, muscles. Last but not least, a challenge if you want to get the shoulders involved is an overhead squat. So simply just putting your arms up and going into a squat makes it a little bit more challenging because now you have the shoulders involved. You want to make sure that your arms aren't coming forward. They're staying as far back as you can. So with any progression piece, you can definitely make this more challenging by adding weight, doing more repetitions, doing more sets. Very easy to add and subtract things as we go along with the squat. Some helpful tips to get you on a great successful squat path, uh, make sure you use a mirror. A mirror either in your bathroom or at the gym, or maybe you have a long mirror at home that's a great tool, or have a buddy or a friend or family member coach you through a squat. Making sure that they're looking at your ankles, your knees, your hips, and your, and your chest and torso, that's a great tool to you 
to utilize as you're going through the squat. Record yourself. If you're by yourself, we all have cell phones these days, take your cell phone out, set it up, actually record yourself. What do you look like when you squat? Last but not least, always, always go for quality over quantity. So if you're doing 10 repetitions of the squat and you feel like your form is starting to suffer and you feel tired, don't overdo it as that could result in injury and or some pain that's, that's not supposed to be there. So always focus on the quality of your movement. Don't add a bunch of weight if you're not ready. Uh, focus on the movement at hand and then slowly progress as you feel ready. That's all I have for you guys today. Just a huge thank you for watching this video for squat progression and modifications. Uh, please make sure you subscribe to Wounded Warrior Project, our YouTube channel, and we hope to see you again in the future. Thank you. Have a great day.